continually be in my mind. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together.
for the apostolic faith. On behalf of my pastor, Aaron, and First Lady Vanessa Dyker, I want to thank you for taking the time to come out and join us for the second uh, year anniversary.
my blessings goes out to my friend, Elder Dykus, and First Lady Dykus. We love you, we honor you, we praise you, and God has much more for you in your journey. God bless you. Thank you.
run is full for the men of your kingdom, Jesus. So the doors may stay open and souls may come in. Please see your precious spirit. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Bless you, Amen. 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 She had a whole lot to say last night. Yeah, but thank God. We thank God for you coming with your pastor. And your pastor has been a friend of ours over the years. I, I've been to peace for over 30 years. And uh, we were always, he would always come so humble. We come to the men's retreat. He never had to, he, I'm the pastor of the seminary. For maybe the first five years, I didn't even know who he was. And then the boys that he had made let me know who he was. They would come to we build a gym in peace. And they would come down there and little rough little rough fellas would rough me up. And I said, Well, I don't know who he is. <laughs> we thank God for the relationship that we had. We thank God for what he's doing here. We don't take it lightly. I remember when we opened it and two years ago in La Mirada, Pastor you told me just be myself. And I thank God for that. And I've, we've come from good stock. Amen. We had a man, God, that was second to none. And he didn't know all of that time. The scripture that's on the program, the very night that he passed away, that's the scripture that God gave me. And I kept repeating it over and over and over and over again. And my wife thought I was losing my mind. And she kept asking me, are you okay? Why do you keep repeating the same thing I keep saying? It's time to gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Hope to the end. And I was mixing I said, because the devil, the adversary, that rolling line, seeking who we may divide. And I repeated it. And we just, instead of, how many have ever had a, a terror service? How about a prayer service? We just had a crying service. Because we learned that our pastor had passed away. And so we cried maybe to three or four o'clock in the morning. And God gave me this scripture. And I told my wife, I said, we're not going back to the church. I said, then we're going to uh, start our own ministry. And I, I never said greater light in my life. Never remember saying it. And I said, greater light ministry. And I just kept saying greater light ministry. Greater light ministry. And we cried some more. We cried some more. And then that by the morning we found out that our pastor was dead. And I just wanted to, I just, I know he was, all of the time he was grooming the men that have gone out, Pastor Maddox, Pastor Mitchell, Pastor Johnson, Pastor uh, 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 Martin, all of us, he was grooming us. He never said that. I'm going to move out of the way because I know we got to move. But one, I, I play golf every week, every Monday with my buddies. And one Monday I had a breakdown. I just started crying. And when I got to the golf course, my eyes were all bloodshot and red. And my friend said, are you okay? And they grabbed me and braced me. And I said, I just thought about something Pastor was saying. He said, learn as much from this old man while you got him around. Because he ain't going to be around for long. And we, we would always go in there. He'd been trying to die ever since uh, Sister Swassie died years ago. And we had to go in there and give him a pep talk. <laughs> And Susan Frank said, it's time to go give him a pep talk. He's trying to die again. 
But he did exactly, I've never seen anybody order up that debt. He said, I want to have a quick heart attack and be out of here. And in these two years, Tammy, his daughter, gave me a picture of him. And he's waving bye-bye. And every time I go over there and open up Sunday school, and ain't nobody there but me. And I see him laughing at me and say, oh, you want to be a pastor, huh? <laughs> he got a big laugh on his face and he waves and say, you want to be a pastor. But thank God, we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. We thank God because we know that we're not wasting our time. We thank God because we got somewhere to go. God is soon to come. And while we have breath in our body, we're going to give God the praise that's due to his mighty name. Because he alone is worthy of all his praise. You agree with me just like your hands and you got to pandemic, he was one of the only churches that was open, and we went over there, me and my wife, because we had been going to churches like Cottonwood and, and uh, New Harvest, because we just wanted to go to church, and so my wife said, I want to go to an apostolic church, she woke up that morning and said, I want to go to an apostolic church, and I was well, I was trying to think of what church is open, and then I called uh, Pastor Box, and I asked for permission to come, he said, he said, we don't have a full congregation, but you may come. And I thank God that he allowed us to come. And got the Spirit of God moving there. And God touched us all he can. We thank God for that. Amen. So give this great man of God.
Dice, pues chico, mi Dios. I'll be there for yes, <laughs> Amen. And we're gonna, I'm going to be there to you for on one of these days we're going to swing a club. Now, you, I heard about you, gay. See, that's why I haven't came out there. Now, when I come, don't you say nothing. Okay? Just pray for me. The, the, it takes less strength than to hit the ball. Don't worry about the ball, though. I believe you're going to count strokes, okay? <laughs> We're gonna play best ball, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. And the beautiful first lady, amen. You guys are dedicated. I like to say you off to a great start. Wonderful start. This is awesome. This is a nice you have a nice building. A nice place. Amen. And God has blessed you. Amen. But the room that you have to grow. Amen. And um, it, God's going to do what He's going to do. Yeah. Just do what you do. Right. Amen. Don't rush God. Right. It will come to it will come to fruition. Yes. Amen. Right. I know the hour is spent, and I'm trying to say a few words if you permit me. Amen. And get out of your way. Praise the Lord. I would love to call your attention. To the book of Acts. Right. Amen. A familiar book, uh, as uh, Sister Francis, amen, said, apostolic. Yes, you want to hear apostolic message. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we apostolic love Acts. Amen. That's the place where the church takes place, that's the place where the birth of the church takes place. Amen. It is geared around two main apostles, Peter and Paul. Amen. And we want to, uh, I thank God for these great men, amen, who stepped out at such a bold time to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'd like to call your attention to chapter number four. We're going to start at the 17th verse. Amen. And we're going to read down to verse 20. 20. I don't know, we're going to start at verse 16. 16. You have your Bible, say amen. Amen. And it says, saying that, what should we do with these men? For they indeed a notable miracle had been done by them. It manifested in all that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it, but that it spreads no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them and tell them to speak henceforth to no man his name, his name. And then call them and command them not to speak at nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God, or hearken unto the more unto the God judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which is seen and heard. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you send your word, Lord, for such a time as now, O oh God. Bless your word, Lord. You said it will not return for you, it will accomplish what you please, O oh Lord. We ask that your morning be appointed, Lord. We ask that you say, you heal, you deliver, you uplift in the name of Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I wanted to. Uh, Bear with me, amen, and for thought, uh, look at your name and say, neighbor, we cannot but speak the things we experience. All right? Now I want you to pack, 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 uh, bring a light, I want you to ask your pastor and your wife, 
What you think it then said? Speak the things that you have heard and seen. And I want to turn real quick to the book of Corinthians. Amen. Another amen. Gospel of the work of the apostles preaching. And Corinthians 1 and 21. So after it is the wisdom of God that the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God for the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes, sir. The point that you preach your preacher, your pastor said, keep preaching foolishness to us. <laughs> Because right, yeah. I need to hear more foolishness. I, I don't need to hear a man the IQ of what this is that and this. But I want to know what God says. Then I, I want you to turn to me with 1 Corinthians 9 and 16. This is the heart of the pastor. He said, although I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I preach not the gospel. I want to say to your father, if he was here, you say preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Now is the time that the gospel must really be preached. Yes, we have so many erroneous doctrines. We got churches popping up everywhere. But everybody ain't preaching the truth. Come on now. Everyone is not preaching the gospel. And the bishop will tell you, preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Preach that what you have heard uh -huh. and what you have experienced. Because uh -huh. what you have heard and what you experience, amen. You can tell it over and over again. So you tell, I don't need no new material. Because he has blessed me over and over again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Going back to the text over to the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, we see, amen, an incredible thing has happened with the apostles. Peter and John. And now the question is, can we shut them up? Mm -hmm. Can we keep them quiet? And I think the church has been silent a little bit too long on some things. Amen. Um, they uh, wanted to quiet what had happened. Amen. Because the name Jesus was getting out of control. Amen. And to go back and just reprieve, amen, a little bit from chapters, uh, early, earlier chapters, amen, as uh, John and Peter said, that we cannot but speak the things that we have seen and heard. Here, uh, here in, the, in the midst of them, amen, is a 40-year-old miracle man. Somebody say 40-year-old miracle. And look, look around and see. Now I want you to look around and say, I see some miracles in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then standing, as he said, and the thing about it, this this 40-year-old man, and he's standing among us and we can't help but see. He's not a child. Amen. He's, 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 he's not an old, you know, but we see it today. We got old and young today. Amen. And we see that we can't coach him to, to say what we want him to say. Amen. He's too, too old. He's too smart. Amen. And oh, uh, just going back with the story of chapter 2 and 3 leading up to the, what they're saying right now. And he said, uh, we see his conditions. And he says he had this condition when, from birth. Amen. And Everybody seen him every day sitting, sitting at the gate, 
and amen, and uh, we can't explain what's going on now. Amen. Uh, right now, he's leaping and jumping all over the building. And he's walking around talking to the people. Amen. He's, he's, he's praising Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and the disciple, I mean, the Sadducees and the, and, and the Pharisees are standing around and said, This never happened before in our temple. This is not the way we conduct our ritual prayer meeting. Uh -huh. Amen. This man is causing a lot of distractions in the building, praise the Lord, jumping around and leaping, amen, about what praying, giving the Yeshua the praise. Yes, and everyone was so wonderfully uh, filled with the amazement, amen, of the man. You know, it, it, he, he took all the attention away from the Pharisees and the scribes and everybody with their own eyes were on him. Amen. And as uh, uh, the crowd looked for an answer, praise God, Peter and John stepped up, amen, and said, amen, uh, we don't have any special holiness powers, but the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Joshua in the God of Abraham and uh, Jacob, he said, this is the one that you have, the father you have rejected. The one that you presented to Pilate. Uh -huh. Amen. And determined where he should go. Amen. But you denied him. So these two young men, amen, who were fishermen, praise the Lord, amen, who came, amen, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we see that they were determined, amen, to let him go, but they didn't let him go. So this, the result of this took place. And we can't, as Peter and John said, we cannot but help but tell what God has done. Yes, sir. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's, an, it's emphatic. <laughs> this is an emphatic experience that same Jesus over 2,000 years ago let it be clear we speak with the same confidence and the same experience amen that the apostles spoke way back then tell your neighbor amen I'm about 100% sure and certain that that same spirit that dwelled in them uh -huh. is in the house. Uh -huh. Praise God. Uh -huh. I'm certain about it because I feel the same in that anointing yes, sir. that I can't help but tell the goodness of God. Yes, sir. Now these apostles came preaching nothing but the resurrection the ascension mm -hmm. and Pentecost. Yes, sir. But they couldn't preach it, amen, until they became a witness of it. Yeah, right, right. They sit there and they sat with God every day. They ate with God every day. Uh -huh. They walked with God every day. They watched God every day. And they came preaching this resurrection and testifying against the hypocrisy and the the wickedness and the tragedy that was going on at such a time as now. Uh -huh. Oh, we need somebody to tell the truth. That's right. Yes, sir. We need someone, hey man, who knows how to explain the unexplainable. Yes, sir. Oh, we need someone to give an account for the uncountable. We need to bring we need someone to bring out the mystery. Of godliness. Amen. First Timothy 3 and 16. Amen. For this is no, there is no mystery to those who know God. You, and the mystery that amen that the apostles have had today is the testimony that we share the same thing today. Praise the Lord. Amen. So here at a time 
It would ask to be quiet. It would ask to, it said, how do we quiet them? How do we silence such an incredible thing? We can't hide him. He's too old. Praise the Lord. He's 40 years old. And he's all over the place. But I hear him tell you, amen. When God has done something for you, look at you it's impossible for you to be silent. If you've been saved, tell your name, it's impossible for you to be, be, be quiet. Praise God, amen. Because when, as he said in Acts 2 and 1 and 4, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in one corner in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind, and filled the house. And they were all sitting, and they appeared upon them cloven tongues like fire, and it sat upon each and every one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, and the Spirit gave utterance. Amen. When you had the Holy Ghost experience, when you had an experience of God. You don't sit there and be quiet about it. Amen. That's not how the Holy Ghost operates. Amen. I don't know anybody that got the Holy Ghost quietly. Praise God. The Bible said they came in like a mighty rushing wind. Amen. It's me know it stirred up everything around it. It stirred up everybody in the building, amen. And they all begin to speak, amen, in an unknown tongue. And the Spirit gave utterance, amen. I'm not talking about somebody teaching tongues. I'm talking about God taming tongues and having God speak the things that God would have his people to hear. Praise God, amen. Amen, I'm so glad I felt the wind. I'm so glad the wind came by me. I'm so glad every now and then, amen, I got to feel the wind. Amen. Every now and then I got to huff and puff and see if God is still with me. Every now and then, amen, you got to know that God is with you. Praise God. I must speak the things that I've experienced, amen. I must tell the things that I've seen. Praise God. And one of God's greatest gifts to humanity, he gave to everyone that believed in him. Amen. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And this thing that I've got, and what you got, you can't describe it, but you do the best way that you know how to explain it. I can't explain it except I know. I got it. I said, I got it. Just like the Bible said. I got it. I can't describe it. But it makes me move. It makes me do the things of God. It takes over my mind, my soul, my spirit. I can't help but speak the things of God. Oh, praise God. Can you name us something about the Holy Ghost? When you experience it, you've been endowed with power. That enables you to live above sin. Yes. See, you can live above sin until you receive the Holy Ghost. You are not able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Praise God without the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God lets us know in Acts 1 and he says, I will sit, you are going and being be to you being endowed with power. Amen. And when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall come out. Every woman and every man and every child who experienced the Holy Ghost, you can't help but tell it. I can't help but tell it. I'm here to tell you, praise the Lord, that the Lord saved And the Lord is still moving today. That same spirit, 2,000 years it's still working in the building today. It's, I'm so glad that the door was left open. He knew that 2,000 years later, we were going to need that same anointing 
to walk with him today. I'm so glad, praise God, that there's power, wonder working power in the name of Jesus. Amen. I must tell what God has done for me. I must tell what God has done for me. How I've experienced God myself. In a text, your neighbor said, I've got a story to tell. Can't nobody tell this story with me. Can't nobody tell you tell what God has done for me in there like I can. Oh, nobody can tell you a story better than you. Oh, yes. You got something to tell today. You must speak of the things that God has done for you. In these last and evil days, we need preachers in the pulpit telling like it is, not what they want to hear. Praise the Lord. Tell them that you must be born again of water, of spirit, or you shall not enter to the kingdom of God. You must cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. Amen. Do you, don't you know that the temple that you have don't belong to you? You are the temple of God. I must speak the things of God. Can't be quiet when you got the Holy Ghost. You can't sit there and say you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And not say anything or shake it out. Man. You can't sit there and say you're full of the Holy Ghost and God is not moving around you. Praise the Lord. Every time God comes in, he feels the presence. Amen. He elevates himself over every situation and circumstance that's in the room. Thank you, Father. Oh, praise God. Amen. And everyone that experienced the Holy Ghost, anyone that has been empowered by the Holy Ghost, amen, he tells me, amen, that, amen, that you have been changed. Yes, sir. You have been changed. Amen. I can say for myself, my experience with the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I, God feel me with the Holy Ghost. He took a liar and made him a preacher. Praise God. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And not only did he take a liar and make him a preacher, he took a sinner and made a saint. Praise God. He, he took a fornicator and made a praise and worship leader. Amen. He took an adulterer and made a marriage counselor out of him. Praise God. So I, I, I got to tell what God has done for me. I must give my report. I each and every one of you are being held accountable for what God has done for you. And can't nobody do it but you. And I, can't nobody testify like you what God has done for you. People need to hear what God is doing. God is still working miracles in the building. Look around you. There's miracles surrounding you. We're all miracles. For the walk of life. We all come along. We come from all dark places. Yes, we have. We come from very, very dark places. David said he picked me up above a horrible pit. Amen. Pat my feet on solid ground. Amen. Gave me a new song to sing. Amen. God has called each and every one of us. Amen. And where he called you from, you ought to go back and tell him what he does. Yes. What you experience, amen. You can't help but tell what God has done. Oh, we need someone to open up their mouth and tell it. Preach it. Don't be afraid of it. Say it out loud. I'm saved and I'm proud. Amen. I'm proud of it. I'm so glad that the best thing I ever done was go down in Jesus' name. The best thing that I ever done is receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, praise God. These men, they were unlearned. They weren't educated, man. No, they weren't educated, man. See, God don't, he doesn't like foolishness. That's why it's about a foolishness of preaching. Amen. As you be saved. Amen. 
He didn't send him to go get a PhD, but he sent him to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And each one of these young men, amen, all 12 of them, amen, they wouldn't learn, man. The only one that was really learned was Paul. He was a, he was a, he was, he stood up, he sat under some very, very smart people. But Paul was so clever that he was going the wrong way. And God had to turn him around. And then, he know, and then Paul said, I cut everything for dumb for the knowledge of God and power of salvation. What I thought I knew, I didn't know. And I'm glad to know that I do know now what it takes to be saved. Praise God. And these young men, they all went, praise God, to the, to the, uh, they didn't go to school. Like some of them, they didn't have bachelor degrees. They didn't have master degrees. We got all kind of theologians today. And then they, 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 they are really demanding that you go to school these days. And you gotta have credentials to show that I am this and I am that. Praise God. You got to have a plaque on your on your office for the people to see that. You've been you didn't graduate and you, you, you think you know what you're talking about. Praise the Lord. But anything that does, the illumination or revelation of God doesn't come by study. It comes by revealing of the Spirit. Amen. Oh, and these young men, they didn't go to the University of Azusa. They didn't go to Pasadena University. But they went to the University of Jesus. They didn't receive a BA or MA. They receive a BS. Born of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And that declared them, amen, to go out and tell the goodness of Jesus. Tell what God had experienced, the experience that they had. They seen the work of God. They seen the power of God. They seen God manifest himself like no other person, amen. Oh, God, I got to tell it, amen. I got to tell what God has done for me. I got to tell how he turned my life around. I got to tell how I walked the streets, amen. And I didn't even know myself, but God knew me, and he called me out in the nick of time. I like to tell someone, amen, God loves you when, they, when nobody else thinks that he loves you, but God loves you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God wants to hear yeah. your, your experience. People need to know that God saves. Yeah. And he saved with all, he saved all kind of people. Uh -huh. You hear what I'm saying? All kind of people. Right. Amen. Oh, yes. Look around the room uh -huh. and say, I don't know what X you are, but I know you want. Yeah. Uh huh. No one's got more than one. <laughs> if you just say such as some of you were. Yeah. And I, I, said, I, said, I hope you ain't that anymore. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Here we see, amen, you know, the, the apostles, amen, you know, John and Peter, saying that I, 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 I can't help but speak the things of God. Yes, sir. You know, when God is going to judge. For God died for my sins. God did the things. And I, 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 if, if I hadn't witnessed the resurrection, I couldn't talk about it. But I've seen the resurrection. And I can't help but tell the goodness of God. I've seen him get up out of the grave. I've seen him walk through walls. Amen. I've seen him eat even fish after he had resurrected. Amen. Amen. And you can't, I can't help but tell the goodness of God. I, 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 I've seen him in, a, in the book of all Acts. One of the ladies said, Why do you men stand here gazing that same Jesus that going away is coming? I've seen the ascension of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I waved bye bye, but I really want, I didn't really want him to go. I wanted to say, Come, we'll come. But the Lord said, I go. Amen. That the Holy Ghost may come. If I don't go, you won't be able to have the Holy Ghost. And you won't be able to stand. Go ye in Jerusalem and tarry until you're down with power upon God. Stay there until you're filled. Don't 
big, don't, 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 don't let the first wind fool you. Make sure you're full of it. Make sure you got it, amen. Like the Bible says. And, and, and tell you don't have any control of yourself until you know that it's God who changed your mind, who changed your attitude, who changed your tone, who changed your identity until you know it was God that spoke to you. You stay there on the altar and get the experience that God can change you. Anyone and any time. Don't tell me that God can't save. Yes, he can. He can save a wretch like me. Thank you, Amen. Pastor Paul said, oh, who can save a wretch like me? Yes, Nobody but Jesus. Wow. It's not a time to be silent. Thank Say, you, not a time to be silent, Pastor. Thank you you got to tell it. Yes, sir. Come every Sunday. See, I'm going to tell it like I said it last week. Yes. Yes. Jesus saved yes. to the utmost. Yes. Jesus said, Amen. 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 And every now and then you gotta throw a little personal part of you in there. He saved me. Praise God. At a young age. Praise the Lord. He called me out of darkness at a young age. Amen. He saved me. Amen. To the point, amen, I'm a witness of not just one heart. Oh, but a couple of heart attacks. Can't nobody do it like Jesus. Can't nobody fix you like Jesus. Can't nobody heal you like Jesus. I've got an experience. I've laid there. Amen. Not knowing that God knew. Praise the Lord. God came into my room. Praise the Lord. Gave me my medicine at my bedside. God lifted me up. Praise the Lord. Told me to run out and preach it a little while longer. I got excited and I got a mission. It's not over until I say it's over. Preach the word, God. Speak the experiences of God. First lady, can't nobody tell that you can tell what God has done. Thank you, Lord. And the most powerful thing that you have is your salvation. Yes, Lord. The most incredible story you have. In what you have. In what God yes. has done for me. Thank you, Father. Stand up and say, You can't tell it like I can. Yeah. You can't yeah. tell it. Yeah. I know uh-huh. what God has done for me. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Who walks and talks with me uh-huh. in the midnight hour. Uh-huh. I know. Yeah. And he's with me at all times. Yeah. Hallelujah. So therefore, I must tell. I must tell it everywhere I go. Everywhere. Everywhere. Praise the Lord. When they don't want to hear it, I still got to tell it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. And if you don't tell it, tell it, if you keep silent of what God has done for you, you keep silent. How come they'll live at you? If you keep silent with the Lord that brought you from, that brother ain't gonna hear it. That sister ain't gonna hear it. So I got to tell you. Because I want them to know that God that saved me can save anybody. I don't care who you are, what you are. I don't care if you're transgender. I don't care if you're a homemonger. I don't care if you're an adulterer. I don't care if you're the biggest liar in the world. God can save to the utmost. God can save. I've experienced it myself. I've got to tell what the good Lord has done for me.
can't be silent, y'all. Gotta tell it. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna close here. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Tell your neighbor. Don't be a criminal. Tell the truth. Speak for things. Speak for things. You have witness and you explain. That's all you have to do. It's, it's criminal when you don't speak the things. You know, when you when you hold back the goodness of God, you're incriminating your salvation. Because what you're doing, you're denying what God has done for you. Yes, sir. And he said, I, have, I will have it. I'll have the rocks cry out. I'll have the rocks cry out. I have someone to praise me. You may not want to praise me, but I will have someone praise me. And here the apostles chose, he says, I have no choice but to obey God. He's your judge. He's your judge. And this this argument. And this brought it was brought before the council. And they had the man there and said, it's undeniable. This 40-year-old man. We see him every day. Asking for arms. And some of us gave him arms. And now he's jumping, weeping, praising God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. How many of you jumped? When God gave you the Holy Ghost. Yeah. How many of you weak when God saved your soul? Yeah. How many of you couldn't wait that you had to go and tell somebody? Praise the Lord. Somebody need to hear. Someone's waiting to hear the goodness of Jesus. When I think, I heard the sister. Early and said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, well, she shook the building. <laughs> oh, I guess we did, so you should win. Because when you, when you think about the goodness of God, yeah. and all that He does for you, it encompasses your world, not nobody else's world. The things He done for you, yeah. your testimony. Oh, what a testimony we all have. What an experience. Thank you, Lord. tell when the experience that they had with God, God told them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go. Tell everybody what you have heard and what you have seen and what you have learned. I called you. I, I have sent you to you. And then they go and tell my word. And God does not give everybody his word. That's right. Well, no, he don't. You ought to count it a privilege that out of 8 billion people, he stepped into your world and said, Thank you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Somebody ought to bring it right there. You know you're the Lord that you claim that you say you're here. You know the Lord has brought you from. Oh, you ought to bring it. God has done great things. So tell your experiences. Share it. Don't share it in the building. Share it outside. See, we, too, we testify too much in the building. We got to start testifying outside the building. We got to start evangelizing outside the house. Most of us know each other's story because we haven't heard it. There's so many out there who have not heard what you have done. People will walk up on me and say, You know, if I was told my, I said, I wouldn't say. And they would look, look at me and say, You? Oh, you look like you said you looked at me living this way all your life. I said, oh, you should have seen me. I was a mess from the flow. 
at the top of my head. My mama said, I'm ashamed of you. Praise God. But God. I said, but God. The love that God has. He see the potential. He see you better than you see yourself. Until he cried. He cried over him. He cried. He prayed over him. Please, that you give me hope. Keep me. Keep me. Praise God. God wants you to speak it out loud. Sound the trumpet. Sound the alarm. Jesus is coming. He will come. Shall come. And he will not tell you. Ready or not. He's coming. Drawing near before. Stay safe. Stay safe. Keep preaching foolishness. Preach it. Preach it. Because it's foolishness that's going to fill the house. They didn't build the church on MDs, BSs, and PhDs. They built it upon the foolishness of the gospel. And it was the church at that time with the first message Peter preached drew 3,000. After they preached that, after they raised the lame man up at the temple, 5,000 were added to the church. It's the works of God that's going to add to the church. It's the foolishness of the gospel that's going to add to the church. It's the faithfulness to God that will add to the church. It's the integrity of the gospel that you keep, that you keep it unblemished, that you walk before, that will add to the church. So keep preaching. Keep preaching. I got no new material. You already heard that from the old print, from the old issue. But let me tell you, He's done great things. Yes. He's done and it's now your opportunity for him to do a great thing for you. If you're here today, God wants you to experience heaven here now on earth. Come on. You, you can have heaven now. You can know that God is with you now. You can know that when you close your eyes, that I'm on my way to heaven. But you must come in by the way that He designed it. You must be born with a natural a spirit, and you must have the evidence of speaking in tongues that the Spirit of God gives us. There is no other way. To come in. And he says, You can't be half born, you got to be fully born. Or you shall not enter nor see the kingdom of God. He said, I don't care if your sins made a scarlet. I don't care what shape you in. I'll wash you whiter than snow. He said, if you can stand up and just confess your faults and your sin, he said, I'm, I'm bigger and bad enough to forgive them all. Yeah. And not only that, I'm going to sling it as far from the east to the west yeah. into, the, into the sea of forgiveness. Yeah. And I ain't going to remember it no more. Yeah. But the enemy is going to try to make you remember. Uh -huh. You're here today. You're here today. You have not experienced what we are talking about, the Holy Ghost. 
You have not been born or watching. And spirit, you can come. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is this is the required. This is required. You can't you can't get in a Costco except you're a member. My brother, he, he's a Costco man. Makes me share my card every time I come in. You can't be a sale man. Except you have the car. Except you have the Holy Ghost. Come on now, man. Reach it. Hallelujah. You know, I don't think people understand. This is not. That's not. That's not the Holy Ghost. I'm gonna teach you what the, that's not the Holy Ghost. Tell your baby to win that. And when the wind comes, you know that Jesus said, I come to baptize you with fire. Holy Ghost. Ain't nobody take the tongue but God. And when God get a hold of your tongue, and I'm not talking about saying yabba yabba do. If they got places you want, they want, they'll teach you that. Your yabba yabba do is going to find out that that genie is broke when it comes to heaven. Get it. Calling on the name of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. He is the giver of the Spirit, and he when he resurrects from the grave, he resurrected to let us know that there is life after death. That you can have that same resurrection life after death. Hey, baby, I think that's something to look forward to. Thank you, Lord. Get it now on this side of the bed. Yes, sir. Don't wait till it's too late. Yes, sir. God bless you.
Sunday morning for me. Hallelujah. those booster shots and all that stuff. Amen. Something called on the name of Jesus. Do everything you need is in this name. You may stand at this time. If we have refreshments. Please stop by right next door and pick up refreshments and don't leave all of that food for me to eat. And uh, refresh yourself. And we thank Amen God for you being here tonight. Take your time out of your busy schedule. You simply said you love us and you love your pastor, the ones who come with him. We thank you for being here. Amen. And we God all the glory for it. Let me lift your hands to the Lord tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for loving us, God, when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you, God, for bringing us out of darkness into this morning's life. Thank you for placing such a great salvation inside of us. The Holy Ghost, God, we can't help but tell somebody. Hallelujah, it's like fire shot in our bed. We gotta tell them. We said we weren't gonna say anything. But when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all you've done, we have to tell somebody. Lord, we ask you to leave this place, but never from your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time. Take us to our sister, you place a little hope. God, we ask you to the we're about to take the night. Let it be nourishment to our body to give glory. Honor unto your name and your Lord's name alone. We fail to give you all praise, Lord, and honor. In Jesus' name, greet somebody. Tell them they're not God. God bless you.